I say, oh, it's another morning And even though I seen yesterday You forgiven my ways this morning So before I go in these streets I sit and I pray For the please show me I'm gonna be just fine Give me peace and some open eyes Yo, welcome back to Diosa's Therapy and Sessions. And, of course, today's another day with my beautiful family. So, we always going to introduce ourselves or reintroduce ourselves, should I say. And today we're with, of course, I am Diosa. And we have... Sister over here, Eileen. Darlene. Nephew over here, Andy. Yes, we do. The whole family's here once again to fill you guys with motivation to get you guys on that right and positive mindset and today's podcast is about energy drainage okay i'm sure we're all very familiar with this subject because it happens to us on a daily we are drained every day by something someone or whatever it is there's many 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 things that drain us mm -hmm. drain us so Let's get this conversation started. Well, you know, I, I always like to do this because we are drinking something. I'm, I'm having cafe con leche. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what I'm having. Yes, but we're still going to cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Okay. Cheers. Every time you have a cup in your hand, you always got to cheers, you know, and, and just ask for all that good stuff that we want. Mm. Okay, so let's get this going, guys. Let's talk a little bit about this energy drainage, what, what we're always here actually talking about, mm -hmm. but I want to share this with the world because like I always say, every mentality, every, every mind mm -hmm. is different. We all have a different mentality. We all see things differently and mm -hmm. go through different things. So I, I really don't want to start by me because it's, I'm always the one talking. <laughs> so whichever one of you want to start the conversation, where, 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 when we talk about energy drainage, mm -hmm. for example, we usually, what, what is it that drain us like the most? What, what, what is it that happens to humans on a daily basis, which is one of the things that hold us back, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's, it's kind of. It's not a hard question, but it's this. It's a very, um, I don't know what word to give it. It's a big topic because there's a lot of things that could drain you. It could drain you emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Like it's, it, there's a lot of sections when it goes into the drainage. But I think most of the time, or like what I see the most is people being drained by other people's negative energy. Right. Right. So that's I I, I I think that's that's the majority of us going through that. Mm -hmm. I it's it's definitely I mean it's it's part of the choices that we make too. There's a lot of the choices that we make put us in or make us feel some type of way that mm -hmm. also end up draining us, but majority of the time it's the humans. Yep. Yeah, majority of the time it's it's humans the ones that drain us and, and you know what the sad part about this is that a lot of times it's happening to us but we don't even know it. And sometimes you do know it and you just choose to stay there. Right. And it's like, it's, it doesn't make sense to other people. Right. right. And, and well, this is the reason why I said they don't even know it mm -hmm. because this is the reason why, um, I always say this, why do we pretend not to know? Mm -hmm. We pretend not to know certain things and we do that on a daily, okay? Mm -hmm. All of us, we do that all the time. We always, you know, we think, oh, they ask you a question and right now you're gonna be like, no, I really don't know why this is happening to mm -hmm. me. Like, for example, um, it happens a lot in relationships. Yeah. Um, I get with this guy and I got with a toxic guy. Mm -hmm. Then I broke up with him and I got with another guy and the other guy's toxic too. Mm -hmm. And then I got with, I broke up with that guy and now I'm, I got with another toxic guy too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us were like, cause I know a lot of women, but damn man, it's mm -hmm. like all I attract is all this I toxic attract. people, why? Mm -hmm. And we're acting like we don't know why mm -hmm. because we don't want to really hit that, that root, the bottom of it. Okay. We're, why? Because of fear. Yeah, mm -hmm. at, at, the end, at the end of the day, we're scared as Okay. to really be like no no I know that this is what I need and to act on it right because 
it's what we were saying and that's why i'm like it's not really that they don't know a lot of people do know they just don't act on knowing they right act on... but a lot of people know not knowing yeah so you see what i'm saying like right that's why i'm saying a lot of people are being drained by other people and they don't even know it mm -hmm. because for example Okay, I'm gonna talk about me, for example. Look, mm -hmm. we have a lot of, I have a huge family, okay? But like, it's really, really big. Well, well you guys know. It's mm -hmm. not like you guys don't know because you guys are my family. <laughs> but we know we have, we come from a huge family. Mm -hmm. But if I go and I visit all my family members, right? And I'm in a certain position mm -hmm. and certain of my family members are doing bad. Of course, the, the, the human kind thing is, oh my God, I'm worried about them. So I'm gonna help them. And you go and you help. Mm -hmm. But then let's say you pay them another visit. And then you're like, oh my God, they're still struggling. And you help again. Mm -hmm. And you help again. But believe it or not, that starts draining me. Yeah, I well. strike, I, I get home and now I feel some type of way. And everything in my life is going fine. Mm -hmm. But I'm here like, man, but I feel so bad. And I feel whatever. To the point that even what I'm doing, mm -hmm. the focus point that I have, it's, I start going backwards myself. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why I say a lot of us, we're, there's humans that are draining us, but we don't you know don't it. Know it. Yep. Because I just came to that realization. Mm -hmm. You get it? That had been happening to me. Yeah, yeah. And I came to the realization of, and it's not that they're doing anything on purpose. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. it's not on purpose. It's that everyone has their own path and everyone has their own struggles mm -hmm. to face, their own obstacles that they need to overcome. I mean, my problems are mine. Yours are yours. But if we're together all the time, if I go and see you all the time, I mean, that's bullshit that I'm not going to care. Yeah. Like, I'm human and you aren't my family and member. And it's not even about caring itself. It's just energies. If I'm going to where you live and where you live is full of struggle, arguments, toxicness, like, you, how, are you, how do you not feel that energy, that vibe? Right. Even when you don't think you're feeling it, you go home and you feel some type of way. Yes. And that's because you... But that's even not visiting anywhere. Exactly. Anywhere. It's true. It's true. And they can still drain your energy. Exactly. Right, it's right. True. And even... Yes, it happens even over a conversation that sometimes you're like, oh my God, we got we got to hang up. Yeah. We got to hang up because I was it's having a, a marvelous day mm -hmm. and then Fulanito called me and I'm here like, oh, whatever. Oh my God, I'm going to answer. Oh my God, what's going on? Right. And then that moment was just like... What, it takes what, what just happened? They're calling you to distress themselves without realizing that now they're stressing you. Of course. <laughs> and then it's understandable that it's not purposely done. No, because no, it's not like they ever do it on purpose. Right. Like a, per, a negative person usually doesn't even realize that they're negative. Right. Until you tell them. Right. You right. get me? So it's, it's a lot of things that they don't do on purpose, but... It's it's a it's a tough situation with family because even though you're not doing it on purpose doesn't mean you're not doing it. Right. And then if I point it out to you and I make you aware of it and you still don't do anything about it, then that's your choice. And now I have to choose. Let me leave that for you. Well, 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 no, no, no. But that was a really, really, really good point that you just made right now. Mm -hmm. Because okay, run that by me again so I could say because you you said let me stop and I was like damn it. Okay, yeah. what was the last thing you just said? That it gets I mean okay um, it, it oh, gets... that they're aware like they're aware and they still don't do anything about it and that's when it becomes your decision whether you're gonna let that affect you or not exactly okay so then for the other person they don't know mm -hmm. but then that's when you become aware when you're telling this person yep. okay hold on everything that's happening now it's falling back on me too because you you're venting with me mm -hmm. you're telling me but because i care for you i'm still there for you so then that's the part where a lot of humans have pr trouble with yep. where now i told you but okay now you told them mm -hmm. now you came to the realization so why are you still there mm -hmm. You understand? But that's just, it's human nature. It is Like, human it's nature. human nature, and it's its really a thing because this goes generation on generation on, like, that's why they call it generational curses. Right. Because families stay together just for the, the I don't know how to explain it, like, the image of family, and because right. of we're blood, and because we're whatever, and at the end of the day, you're just full of people that are not there to support you. Like, you know, not healthy. That's really what it is, unhealthy people. Like, people that are unhealthy and are not willing to become healthy knowing that they have problems and 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 
it's all a matter of what you're used to. Because mm-hmm. I, I can understand. I understand the reasons why. But the purpose of this conversation, it's really so that we can come and, and to, to the realization of when we need to stop for ourselves. Yeah, exactly. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, it, it can't always be, okay, now I'm aware of it. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, I was at a good space. I started hanging out with you. And now I'm not in such a good space. And all of a sudden, it's not that I'm doing anything wrong, but I'm going backwards. Exactly. And why is that happening? Exactly. So then, a lot of us, we do this. This is what humans do, actually, on a, on a day-to-day. We already found out that this person, you know, kind of drains us a little bit and, and, and holds us back mm-hmm. and all of that. But now, we have a problem. The problem is that we know they have a bigger problem. Yep. Right? And because they have a bigger problem, now we feel bad. Mm-hmm. And we feel bad, and now it's kind of like hard for us to tell that other person, oh, look, this is what's happening to me. This is what whatever, you know. It's yeah. And then we decide that we're not going to say anything because, you know what, this person is going through a lot. Mm-hmm. This person is going through so much. So right now, I can't just, like, tell this person because they're going to be like, oh, my God, you too. Mm-hmm. So we avoid telling them yes. to not make them feel bad. What do you think that happens to that person? You're, it's... At the you're, end piling of, on to, you're piling on you're piling rocks exactly. to the pile you're adding exactly. rocks to the pile because you're just not telling them and at the end of the day that person is just like oh wow if you don't let them so know God, like they know at the exactly. end of the day we're all it's humans true. we know we're fucking up right you know we know when, when we're fucking up we just choose it's so our choice like we choose know. to do it otherwise right so then when it, when it comes to those into those situations yeah some, when somebody's telling you you're like oh yeah whatever you know. but you know it, you never know if you'll be that person to spark up my mind, to right. spark up that person's mind, right. and be exactly. like, "Fuck, bro," you know. There's been a couple of people already that have exactly. told me about you this. Exactly, you could so, be you know, the last person they need. Right. You never know. You never know what will happen. Right. Know? So, it, it, what, what, what can they do? Get mad at you for what? Telling yeah. them, telling them good advice, telling them something good. At right. the end of the day, it's like it's it's a tough conversation to have. It's uncomfortable. Definitely. Definitely. But uncomfortable conversations need to be had. Cause exactly. It, it all goes back to exactly what like I was thinking about before. Like, it's hard to communicate that. So then you just don't. But communication is everything. Because then I'm feeling some type of way and you don't know that I'm feeling some type of way. And then now I act different with you and you have no idea why I'm acting different with you. And it all like, it all literally just piles on into like a cycle yeah. of... So okay. then it all comes down to the fact that they already know what they have to do. But mind exactly. you, I'm talking about now us that we're trying to deal with these people, trying to like help them. But at the same time, we said, okay, what do you think ends up happening after? You know what happens after at the end? You're trying to not tell this person nothing because they already know what they got to do. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you end up suffering too. Of course. Now what happens is that you're the one suffering because you not telling this person to not make them feel any worse about their circumstances or situation or whatever it is that they're going through. Now their reality became your reality because now you're also suffering because you don't want to tell them, but you end up suffering more. I think that's kind of, um, that's kind of where you're going to draw the line and you as a person have to be like, you have to choose you. You have to choose you or that the, the person. It's either it's survival of the fittest. Exactly. It's either you or me. Right. What's up? Are you going to change mm-hmm. or right. are you not? If you're not, then let me know so I can make arrangements and I could, you know. Right. Doesn't mean we don't have to, we, we don't, we have to stop talking. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean we, you know, we, we have to completely distance ourselves. But you have a I certain am, time. We are, we are going to, we are going to take, you know. A little yes. bit of distance from from each other because it is affecting me at the end of the day. Of it is course. affecting my progress, my future, my you know my my aspirations mm-hmm. is affecting everything that goes on to, in my life. Mm-hmm. Right. So it is draining. Right. And we can't have draining because mm-hmm. then we get held back. Right. And we're we're trying to get up there. Mm-hmm. So if we don't get up there, who's gonna get up there for us? Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Now who, who's gonna drag everybody else along with exactly. us? Right. Like you get me? That goes into something else. That has to do with this too though. Okay. It's it's draining to want to go up and like to want the people around you to go with you and then to let them know how to do it and all of that and then just watch them not do it. Like right. that's extremely draining but that's when you have to realize like he's told me this all the time and like 
it's hard because it's uncomfortable. Like, it's tough love. It's right. tough love. Right. But he's told me this before, too. It's like, you, it's okay to want to help people, but, like, how are you going to help people when you're not even up yet? You got what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, that doesn't mean you can't help people on your way. But realistically, like, I can't want it more than you do. Mm-hmm. Right. I can't possibly want it more than you do. And then at the same time, want it the amount that I want it. Like, right. you got what I'm saying? We just don't have time. Like, you just don't have time. That's time that you're thinking about that, time that you're on the call, time that you're sad, time that you feel lazy because of the drainage. Like, there's no time. Like, one day that you don't post a video is one day you didn't post a video. Right. Like, one right. day that you didn't do this is one day less that, that or one day more that you're going to have to work to get to where you want to go. Like, it's... Right. Every second is important. Every second is important. Mm-hmm. That, that, that was, that's amazing what you just said. Because every, every second is definitely important. And that, that, I think that's one of the major I- issues with humanity. Mm-hmm. That we are not realizing our own value. We're not realizing that we come first. Um, not too long ago, I asked my sister. She has five, five kids. I have three. Mm-hmm. She has five, right? So um, I asked her, if you had to eat, right? You guys are all starving. You and your kids are starving. Mm-hmm. And you guys are out and about, but you guys are somewhere walking. Now you're on feet. You're mm-hmm. stranded. And a, and, a, and a piece of bread like this came about, Okay. Who do you feed first? That's a really tough Who question. Who you feed first? Who do you feed first? Who do you feed first? Me and my kids. I wouldn't. I'll be. Break, I'll break bread with everybody. You'll be what? I'll break, break bread break. with everybody. Who do you feed first? Was the question. Not do you Who feed do you everybody? Right? Who, do you feed Who do you feed first? Me and my kids. I'll probably feed my kids. Uh, that's what she said. How about you? And then I'll feed myself, and then my husband. I would or, think No, nah, me as a man I'll probably feed Darlene the kids And then I'll probably eat myself last That's good But I know that like I know what I would love to Like what I would want to do But like the Not the psychology But I've, I've seen this before Like okay. I've seen this conversation before <laughs> And it kind of goes like it, it's a, it goes together with a lot of stuff Because for example With that one What I've seen is like I take care of y'all So if I'm not good Like if I'm weak what what are you, what are the kids gonna do without like you know like yeah. me being strong like me being able to whatever? Yeah. It's for example like um I don't know if you've guys seen this question before I've seen it on social media it was like between a, a, a wife and husband mm-hmm. right like who do you choose your kids or your wife or like you know your husband or your kids or whatever mm-hmm. and it's not choose as in like I don't know if you get what I'm saying I but do. just choose in a situation right who do you choose? And it's like everybody's instinct is like, oh, my kids, because at the end of the day, my husband or my wife, like they're not my blood or whatever. And it depends on the kind of relationship you have in a healthy relationship where it's really teamwork and partnership for everything. Who you really choose is your your partner Mm because you're the one that's helping me Mm -hmm. make all of this happen. So if I feed the kids, but then we're over here starved, like, what are we going to do? Right. And then they have to fend for themselves like it's. At the end of the day, not the breadwinner, but like, you know, the people that are taking care of the others, they're the ones that really need to. So, what usually happens with the human body, because kids are kids and mm-hmm. we, are, we are adults, we are going to last a little longer. Right? The kids are going to like, mm-hmm. go first. We <laughs> are going to last a little longer. Yeah. So, if it comes to a piece of bread and I have my children, I'm going to feed myself first only so that I can have all the strength that I need to do everything it takes to go for them. Mm -hmm. Because here's where energy drainage also comes in. Mm -hmm. When you don't look after yourself first, then I'm going to feed my kids first. Mm -hmm. Now there's nothing else to eat. I fed them first. I said a little piece of bread. Mm -hmm. I didn't say a whole loaf. I didn't say a a, a foot from Subway. No, I said a little piece. Mm -hmm. And, And she got five children. So five children, but you... So that's six people. You're the adult. Mm-hmm. You fed all of them. There's not, there's not enough for you, mommy. There isn't enough. The one that's going down first is her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are the kids going to do? At this point, now you're super weak because you didn't eat. Your kids have all the energy. And you're here like, how do I make it? How do I make it? Now you're drained even more. Mm-hmm. Now your problem is bigger 
Because if you would have ate you, you would have had that energy to probably carry all five of them and said, let's go. Sure. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yep. This is the problem with humanity. Mm -hmm. That they always try to look out for that mm -hmm. other person. Because I don't want to make you feel bad. Mm -hmm. Because you are whatever. What about you? Mm -hmm. I mean, but I, st I still feel like I will still stand on my point. Like I would, if, if we found that piece of bread, I would still feed everybody and then feed myself last. I, I don't see, like, I get what you're saying. Well, I it, it depends on saying. the amount of people, but put yeah. in the story I'm a little piece like this, there's five kids. Yeah. yeah. That, if, you, if you're going to go like this, and, and that a crumb? <laughs> that's a very, yeah. If you of think course. that that a crumb is gonna, you know, it's if the crumb is gonna make you Popeye, and you're gonna be like, <laughs> then. But I don't, I don't, I don't think that crumb is gonna get to there. <laughs> but yeah, in that scenario, I'm definitely, definitely yeah. At the end of the day, bottom line is, we always have to put ourselves yeah. first. I was, um, my, my sister was here from Atlanta not so long ago, you know, my birthday, it was super awesome, mm -hmm. and um, she stayed here, mm -hmm. but I don't have a huge apartment, but I'm I, I'm comfortable, as yeah. you can see, at the rooms, there, there's a bathroom and everywhere, whatever, and then um, I told her, you know what, stay in my room, yeah. and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with the kids, you know, I'll stay with the kids in the room, and then um, my godson, which is my sister, my brother-in-law, my sister's man, he was like, oh my God, but we're like overstaying our welcome and no, you need your bed back. Like you can't. And I looked at him and I said, hmm, I love you and I love my sister even more, you know? And I was like, but I would never be uncomfortable for you, her, or nobody. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is the honest me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, honestly, the only reason why I, I honestly, it wasn't hospitality. It wasn't, oh, you're so cute. You're very nice. Yeah. No, I'm not cute and nice. I'm not cute and nice. I look cute, you know, <laughs> and I can be nice, but I'm not yeah. that type of nice. Yeah. I'm never going to be uncomfortable for someone else. Yeah. It's not a thing. And sometimes it still happens to me. There's many times that I'm, I still feel uncomfortable for certain things or certain people that are around me, but I don't notice it. Mm -hmm. You get it? I don't, I, don't, I don't really realize it. I don't really whatever. So then that's when... You hit, you know, it's not so you like hit ground bottom, yeah. you know, you, you hit and you're like, why am I feeling like this? Mm -hmm. And then at least for me, now that I think so much about things and then I've, I've just grown mentally, spiritually, in every sense of the, any word I've grown mm -hmm. and I get to sit down because meditation is a thing and we yeah. all know that. Yeah. So this is the reason why meditate. we always mm -hmm. meditate. And that's part of one meditation. of the biggest keys. Mm -hmm. For you to release drainage, meditation, and people meditation. don't take that shit into consideration. Really people works. are like, yeah, yeah, we meditate. And it's just... It really works. You really don't have to do, like, no, I mean, I've never done an hour, like, ever. I think we started with five minutes, and then the most we've done is, like, ten minutes. But even those ten minutes, it's time that you're pouring into yourself. Like, that's something that that I took out. Like, I really learned that. Like, you, for example, that's why morning routines are so good. Right. Pouring into yourself before you go out into the world and have to deal with other people is the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah. The most. Because you also have to learn this is also part of, like, you know, like, journeys of, like, self-development. That shit teaches you how to, like, know yourself. Right. Like, how to love yourself. Not right. even just meditation, but that one hour of you focusing on you and you doing things for yourself it shows you what you like, what you don't like. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it just, and you literally learn to love being by yourself. Right, That's right. That's something, oh my gosh. Now that you said that, because it all falls into the same thing, mm -hmm. I had to learn that really, really bad, okay? So I come from a huge family, you guys know, but I have, we have like, uh, what, five, six brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. we're, okay, so we're a lot. <laughs> and um, we're always very together. Yeah. So you guys know that too. But like always very together. It wasn't until we all turned like 21 that the one was like, oh, I'm going to Canada, I'm going to Georgia, I'm going to whatever, and I never understood that. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean, me and my sisters, what, what do you mean we're not gonna be together? Like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you're gonna go live where? Like, where? She, where? You're gonna, what? How without are we separating? Me. Without <laughs> me? No, that was something very insane for me. Yeah. Being alone, I used to say, I'm never gonna leave, live alone. Never. Mm -hmm. Like, I used to say, never. No, I'm gonna always be with someone or whatever. My whole life, I live with this sister here. Mm -hmm. And I've always been, like, used to that thing because... When you come, when you're raised, of also course. we're all raised differently, and I was raised in a in a you know a yeah, familiar, you, you very, form a codependency, right? 
But it wasn't until the changes started occurring and I had to come into a point of acceptance because yeah, there's nothing right. else I could have done. Yeah. Like, I wasn't going to gunpoint them, no come back and stay next to me. I wanted to. Like, I honestly wanted to be like, I'm going to kidnap them. I'll put them in the bunker. Bring them back. Bunker. Bunker and bring Break them back. back. You know? But, of course, I couldn't do that and I had to come into a realization of, mm-hmm. you know, things do change. And what am I going to do now? What? How do I accept this? Exactly. And it wasn't until I started th- taking therapy myself. Mm-hmm. And, and, be, and amongst that therapist, my therapist told me, but what's the problem with you wanting to have a man? I wanted to have, like, you know, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. You have, look at you. You're a whole talent. Mm-hmm. So why don't you just start meditating, spending time with yourself, mm-hmm. spending, and I'm here like, hmm. No, no, I'm good. The best thing I've done in my life. I'm that, sure. The best thing I've done in my life, and sometimes I kid you not, I only have two minutes, mm-hmm. and two minutes make a difference. It does. Do you understand that sometimes I'm like, oh my god, I'm running late. I'm like, wait, my and bone. I stand in front of that mirror, and I'm here like, and I'm here like, oh my body hurts, whatever. And then I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, your body doesn't hurt, and I'm like, yes, it does, mm-hmm. but it doesn't hurt. Air, meditation, you can do it in any, in any form. form. That's what I was about to say. That's in the any best form. Part. So you don't have to come and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I do it. I do it too. So. It's, it's amazing, okay? You put the whole little beach sound, you smoke a blunt, you do the whole little incense, and no, you really find yourself. You travel. You travel far. But. You don't always have to do it like that. You don't. You could be in a hurry. You know what? You meditate in the gym. <laughs> you can do that. The car. You meditate in the car. Anywhere. That's it. Anywhere. That's in your the shower. Anywhere. That's a great place to meditate. Yes. Actually, meditating yes. in the shower. Is yes. Great. Well, it happens to me a lot actually. It just. I, mean, I think it, it just, just happens, happens to people. I think right. It, happens. it just happens because yeah. sometimes the there and then. <laughs> yeah. All the time and then I come out like wrinkled and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I spend so much. <laughs> I look like I came out the pool. And I'm like, oh my God. I come out white, you know, pale. Pale. It happens. But, but, okay, so I did write down some questions. Okay. okay, Go ahead, go ahead. Before we leave off, um, no, we're talking about meditation. We are, we are talking about meditation. The whole meditation shit goes with our initial topic about energy draining. Yes. Yes. Meditation. Yes. Meditation, bro, is the craziest thing. It really is. For you guys watching out there, meditate. If you if you have, if you're if you're at a low vibration, if you're mm-hmm. like a naturally a slumped over person, meditate. If you have anxiety, if you, you have anxiety, know. meditate. Journal. Journaling. Journaling is super good. Yes. Yes. Journaling yourself. is good just because you progress. Like I love to do it for that. Like I love to see progress. I love to see what I wrote. Like a month ago. Vision boarding. Vision board. Okay. Wow. That that one worked for me like you won't imagine. So this this one, my sister was the one that first told me to do it. So my 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 little sister Thais, um, she was the one that actually told me like, do do a little a little calendar and put it everywhere. Like mm-hmm. she told me, put it put you you do you write it down, you make it up, and then you put one on the fridge. Yeah. You put one like on your where you have your trophies. You put one in your Maybe, whatever yeah. everywhere where you can actually go and see it. Mm-hmm. So when you open the the fridge and you close it, you're like, oh, you know. Exactly. And then you go to your closet and you close it, you're like, oh, yeah. you know. And that really works for me. Of course, because it, you don't always have someone that's on top of you to be like, oh, but you said you were gonna do this. Oh, but you said you were gonna do that. And at the end of the day, you also really don't. You don't tell everybody your all your goals. Right. You got me. Like right. some goals you keep to yourself, and right. if you don't either have that person there to be like, what are you doing? Or you don't see it all the time. You literally forget about it. So there's the saying in Spanish que dice, um, calladito te ves más bonito. Mm-hmm. Why, why, um, translate that for me. Um, you know they say, calladito te ves más bonito. Like, not speaking. Like, don't speak up. Right, don't speak your things. Don't speak because your things. Because things. Right, be right. You, it, things come out prettier, mm-hmm. you know. I I came to learn that too because yeah. you see, I've always been kind of like how I am right now. I always been really, I've always been really shut out, like mm-hmm. about my life. Mm-hmm. I've been an open book, 
and and with all my craziness that I used to do, and when we're young, we all do a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Whatever, it's all part of the process. Mm -hmm. Cause that's how that's how I've learned so much. The, the the more of the crazier things you do, the more lessons you learn. Mm -hmm. So the, that's why a lot of people they tell you, oh, I was raised indoors, and the people that were raised in the streets usually have more game. Mm -hmm. They're usually I wouldn't say smarter, but in street a way, street right, smart. street smart. Like in a way. A, you can probably beat a, an attorney or a doctor at many things yeah. just because Absolutely. you're book smart. You yeah. you you know how you know this, but this other person knows the struggles. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This other person knows the the hurt, the pain, mm -hmm. the beatings. The you know it's different. Yeah. So so for all of that, like when all of that happens, sometimes it's like you know. And then for me, I had to learn that like that. I started like to myself. I started not speaking out so much mm -hmm. i was like you know because i've always been very talkative and always whatever but to get certain things done certain mm -hmm. goals accomplished yeah i realized that not everyone is in it to win it with you no i'm just and but but people can just be so fake and you not know it yeah people are so good at being fake really good They're like good really fake. good <laughs> like it's scary yeah. of how mm -hmm. good it is that there's people that you've had, I'm talking about years. That's crazy. And then you see the real, and I'm here like, no. And I and I even, you refuse to believe mm -hmm. that, no, no, this person, they, they changed, they changed, they weren't like that. And you have other people telling you, they were always like that. You mm -hmm. just never saw it. You just never saw it. Because mm -hmm. we refuse to see it. Yep. And that is part of either what we, drains us. Either we refuse to see it, or that person got to a breaking point that it was just like, okay, now you show me your, t your true colors. Because it could be one of those situations that, yeah, we've been buddy-buddy for mm -hmm. so, how, however long, and you've never showed me that side of you. Yeah. But now, I took it out of you, and I'm like, okay, yep. right. that's what I needed to see from you. you right. Me? So it could be, you know, it varies. Right, but but then that's that's a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. That that oh, right course. there that right there is, is, is you already realizing who the F you are, and it's mm -hmm. like, you ain't gonna catch me again. Yep. You get it? So then that one is you realizing already and you already taking that step mm -hmm. towards I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about the people that don't wake up like that. Yeah. Which is the majority. It is. Mm -hmm. the, that's that's the majority of the people that are still there trying to mm -hmm. get away, but they can't get away. They can't. Or they don't know how to get away. Because it's not that they can't. Mm -hmm. You can. But we don't know how to actually take that step and the thing is since people are so good at being fake realistically a lot of times you don't even know who like you don't you really don't like out of all the people that you tell or whatever you don't know who was really like really supportive really happy for you and who was like oh yeah so cool whatever right. and went home and was like wow like who does she think that she is right. like, wow or whatever right. and you have no idea you literally right. have no idea right hey that's that's kind of like just like um for my birthday, we rented the house. Yeah. And the lady we spoke to, she was so amazing. Oh my nice. god. <laughs> yeah. That I'm sorry. Yeah. The lady was amazingly nice. Yep. Okay. We rented an Airbnb. When I'm telling you, well, we didn't rent it. It was my surprise, but they rented it. Mm -hmm. But the lady was super nice. Can we leave a little bit later? We left a little later. Whatever. Super. Talk about being blinded. Like, mm -hmm. Talk about being blinded. The review the lady left. They had over like 40 people there. They, they trashed the, the house. Place. They left. I was like, I mean, the good thing is that we've already been through things like this. Mm -hmm. We when when you when you already hit these type of people, it's it's it is a little hard for you to trust everyone else that comes your way. Yeah. It is a little hard. It does become hard when you you know when you have to retrust again mm -hmm. but it's not it's not that we can't do it because yeah. i i i'm open to trusting who the, the next person that comes into my life mm -hmm. it's just that now we have our guards up exactly but but talk about being or acting like you're someone till the last day that we left Literally, thank you so much so okay and we're back so we did have to do a little editing really quick. We had to cut the video because, as you can see, my nephew is no longer here with us for the rest of the segment, but it was only because he suffers from what we, most of our family suffers from it, which is migraines, a pain in the ass, and he was here 
being all tough, mm -hmm. not saying anything. And all of a sudden he gets up and then he's like, oh, I feel horrible. And I was like, okay, this is the time that you do exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You look after yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, but let's finish. There's, we are going to finish it. But guess what? You need to do what? And he was like, yeah, me first. So I'm going to take my pills. I'm going to go lay down and I'm going to do what I do. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we want you guys to do every time. Always yeah. think about yourself first. It doesn't matter if you're working. It doesn't matter if you're getting paid for what you're doing. None of that matters. Mm -hmm. What matters really is for you to look after yourself because you are what legitimately matters first. Yeah. But before we close this episode, okay, because I still had some mm -hmm. questions and I just want... <laughs> the different perspectives okay, okay? so I, I want the people to see what how you feel about it you that you are a little older but I want people to know how you feel about yeah. it too because you're younger so it's like we have a whole trend of ages yeah. and that's what I want to give to the world put it out there because I feel like we can all relate to this right okay so I'm gonna start with you sis okay so my question is how can you tell if someone is draining your energy there's people that really don't take accountability for their actions, mm -hmm. which I was kind of saying earlier that I was saying that a lot of times it's not about a problem that you have or or like within whatever's happening, but someone can just call you to mm -hmm. vent their problems, their exactly. depressions or anything, and then I'm here listening, whatever, and then after being done with their conversation or et cetera, I find myself either giving attitude or, or mm -hmm. feeling stressed, and I'm here like, well, why? Mm -hmm. Because they dropped it all on me. Of course. So that it's like... Right. And it was it's amazing that you actually said that, because that is one of the major reasons. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't take accountability of their actions, mm -hmm. of the things that they do, or they want to pin it on someone exactly. else. Like, no, it, it's not really on me. It's not really about whatever. It's about what you did, yeah. or it's about what you whatever, all because they don't want to actually face the fact that they're, that they're the ones the that they're the problem right because you know what happens a lot too like for example there's people that depend on another person mm -hmm. but when you help someone out look i have a friend that he's in need and you're like okay oh i just give him a dollar every week mm -hmm. and then i'm like hey this happened to my brother not so long ago actually he had a really close friend of his right for many mm -hmm. years but he's like but i'm here like Honey, listen, I understand, but you need to grow. You need to do you. You need to um, um, come up already. And he's like, oh, my God, but he's my friend from so many years. And, he's, and I'm like, yeah, for so many years. And you guys are about the same age. Mm -hmm. You guys are struggling just, just the same, just everything. Yeah, but I only give him a dollar, but I only give him, like, every time or $10. And I'm like, all right, one day that's going to cost you. Of course. And then what happens? When you actually try to help a person like mm -hmm. that, you know, you try to, okay, no, I'm only giving them a dollar, I'm only giving them this, they get accustomed to that. Exactly. And the moment that you can't help them, that's where they don't want to take exactly. account of accountability and they're like, oh, after all of this, I, I stayed here and I did all of this and whatever, now you no, you no longer want to look after me or you no longer want to help me? What type of friend are you? Yep. And now they're putting it on you and that exactly. is draining us of because you're here like so I spent all these years helping you but that's the reason why sometimes I say helping someone is the worst thing you can it's do it's the worst thing that you can do no it if we have a problem go through it mm -hmm. I have people calling me oh my god you know I'm going through this they're gonna kick me out of my apartment and I've literally told them that's good mm -hmm. they're like what and I'm like I'm glad you're going through that but I have kids I'm glad Take very good care of your kids, okay? Mm -hmm. Stay with your kids. Wherever you sleep, they sleep. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, they go. But if it's a problem that you're having right now, problems can be resolved. Yeah. So then what you're going to do now is take accountability of what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. Because it's not happening just because. Of it's happening so. for a reason. So that was that was awesome. Amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to jump to you. Okay. So how do you deal with a draining person? I think the first thing that you do, obviously, you have to become aware that they're a draining person. But once you do realize that, you communicate it. You okay. communicate it with the person. You let them know, hey, listen, this is how I'm feeling because of what you're doing. I see that this is wrong in this, whatever, whatever, whatever. You communicate the whole thing. And at that point, that's when it's their decision to do what they want to do with that information. Are you going to change or are you going to stay the same way? And then if they don't, you obviously know they know because you talk to them about it. That's when it's time to set boundaries. Like, exactly. I was going to get to that because I was going to say, so what you're trying to say is, mm -hmm. 
boundaries. Of course. You need to set boundaries. That is one of the major, major. issues with all of us that mm -hmm. we want to help and then afterwards we're tired and we don't know how to get out. Well, how do you get out? You set boundaries. boundaries. You have to set boundaries and you have to actually tell people, look, this is what it is. Oh, but all these years, well, all these years I was one way. Exactly. But now I'm this way. So they say people don't change. All right, if that's what you think, that's fine. But yeah, I, I've, I've changed of myself. Course. There's a lot of things in me that I still have the same belief. I still have, but no, I've made I've made some changes. Of course, and as you should have. You right. Mean, that's... Right. That the only thing is that I've made the change within me. Mm -hmm. No one has changed me. Mm -hmm. It's me the one that has decided to do that. So yeah. that's the reason why we have to set boundaries okay. so that people can actually say, oh, wait, what? And think whatever you want to think. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I'm helping you still. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to think about me, fine. But the moment I separate myself from you, you have two options. Either you try to survive mm -hmm. and stay on that survival mode so you could get somewhere or hate me. Either or, that doesn't affect me. At all. No. It's not going to affect none of us. No. Girls, this has been really great. I hope you guys have loved our conversation of today. Yes, and so of course, I mean... We have more of this coming. So I need you guys yeah, to stay tuned. Um, like I said, whoever I have here on the podcast, I'm always going to leave their Instagram and their information. Um, how do you say it? In the, no, like, no, in the description. In the description, okay? So I'm going to leave it in the description so that you can follow all of us through our journey because, like I said, we all have a story to tell. We can all relate from everyone's experience, everyone's mm -hmm. stories, everyone's struggles, everyone's everything. We all relate from it, and we could all learn from it, too. Mm -hmm. So, Real quick, though, before you finish, I wanted to know, because I'm kind of interested, did you choose, like, these books specifically, or did you just put them there? Like, Oh, okay. So, since you want to talk about... I'm interested. <laughs> okay, so... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little something about these books, okay? So the reason why I put them on here is because, one, I think reading is very important, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it exercises the mind. It's a way of, of helping your own self, mm -hmm. like, expand to, to just to see another horizon, yeah. another, another future, another beginning, and even another ending. Mm -hmm. And... These are these are people that have helped me, which is the reason why I'm just paying it forward. Um, Viola Davis, well, I'm sure we're all very familiar with mm -hmm. this icon. She's an she's just extremely inspiring. Mm -hmm. She literally started from the bottom, and now she's here. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely someone that that influences. She's yep. she's a hell of an influencer, and just reading. I mean. Since you asked, now you get to. Get I'm not. Get, I'm not, get, not. No, you're not taking mine. No, you aren't taking mine. You get to buy hers because because we're supporting here. Remember, it doesn't matter if she's already up here. No, we still gotta support the cost because it took her a really long time to get to where she's at. So. You guys definitely have to read it. Viola Davis is very amazing. The second book that we what that we have here, um, it's by a very special person. <laughs> I just love this person so much. Also started from the bottom. Now she's like here. Even though we're gonna get here, but now she's here. But she started from here though. Um, this book it was created by Joanne Suarez. <laughs> That's me, mm -hmm. Diosa. Diosa is my um, artistic name, my stage name, my name since I was very, very young. Mm -hmm. That's what they named me for a reason. You know, they it's like they already knew I was a goddess. I just mm -hmm. really didn't know it like that. And now I'm just, you know, putting some respect on my name. Yep. But um, this book is called Therapy and Sessions, of course, mm -hmm. because I actually did it while I was taking therapy myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the real title of it is what you pretend not to know. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of people out there, like we said, we, we spoke about this earlier, or we mentioned it earlier, there's a lot of people out there that are pretending that they don't know what they need to know. The yeah. red flags are right in front of their faces. It happens to us daily, mm -hmm. and we just close our eyes to not see them thinking we're gonna make life better, and exactly. it's time to take away that ma mask. It's mm -hmm. time to take it off, and I'm not talking about the COVID mask. Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking about that mask that we carry where we believe we have to be someone that we're not in mm -hmm. order to be accepted by everyone. Yep. So so this, this book, I highly recommend it, guys, not only because I am the author and I wrote it, but because it tells my story, it tells how I've made it, this far and how I'm going to keep going mm -hmm. you know so if 
for anyone that's interested. By the way, all of them have gotten them from Amazon. So please, Amazon.com. Amazon you put therapy and sessions, Diosa, or where you pretend not to know, and it's available in English and in Spanish. Now, next over here, we have this book by Mel. Mel Robinson, I think. Um, and it's the five second rule book. Mm -hmm. This is one of the books that helped me because I, I do, I'm a little impatient, okay? Mm -hmm. So so I'm a little impatient for many things. Yeah. I When I want something, I want it now. Yeah. And when I can't get it, I, I used to go through this, you know, the stressful point, which mm -hmm. was one of the reasons why I had my last, the, I've had two strokes, yeah. unfortunately. But the last one, the last stroke I had was in 2017 and it had to do a lot with stress. Mm -hmm. You get it? I, I was the type of person that would stress very, very easily. And this was recommended to me and it actually changed my life. Mm -hmm. It's a five second rule book and it's, it, it's, I'm, I don't want to tell you everything because I do want you to buy it. You know, I'm only paying it forward. These are great authors that will really potentially change your life and change your mindset and the way of you seeing yeah. things, right? And it's really you just about you giving yourself five seconds before you blow up. Mm -hmm. So before someone spoke to you in one way or whatever, shh, count to five mm -hmm. and think, hold up, does this person even deserve five seconds? <laughs> of my energy when they're feeling or acting this way if they're not compatible and we know when someone is not compatible mm -hmm. to us because we all know it we just try to like you know leave it act like we're blind by it mm -hmm. but we know it yeah. so then that that this is something that will help you a lot if you're that type of person that you're impatient or very you stress very mm -hmm. easily for everything highly recommended and last but not least here this book here is by my godson Adam speaks. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, you I know. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's a very okay. It's very amazing. I don't want to say too much about it either because I I like to give you like the sneak peek, right? It's like a preview, but you have to buy it in yeah. order to really know what's in it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's why I'm paying it forward. We have to and it's something else that helped me. This book helped me see the world in a different way. So then that's that's what his book did for me. He actually put out there what the justice system doesn't tell you, in other words. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. So, and, and, and you know, that the justice system has its tricks and its ways, mm -hmm. you know, and he just elaborated the things that we have not, that they've hid from us mm -hmm. in life. And it's just the way that he put it, the perspective, it was something so amazing that I'm like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, I just, I, I, I met him, what, three years ago? It's yeah. been, the, it's been about three years ago and I was just like, wow, such a young and also talented person. Very, it's, it, the, it's, it's all about a mindset, yeah. you know? And when you are, uh, a person that you're very positive, you're a go-getter, you're a striving person, and all you think about is how you can make it up, 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 I'm going forward and never backwards, those are the type of people that you want to follow. Those are the type of people that you want to read about. Those are the type of people that if he wrote a book, I want to I wanna see what he wrote or what does he know that I don't know. Exactly. Well, this book is going to tell you all of that. And you can also find it in Amazon, Adam Speaks. It's amazing. So... Thank you for asking the question. I actually oh, love yes. sharing this with you guys. <laughs> guys, please buy the books and then thank me later. In the meanwhile, we're going to let you guys go. And thank you so much for being part of our journey once again. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned. Stay connected. Stay creative. Stay positive. And most of all, stay focused. Yep. You got that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we, 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 we have to say it together. We out. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. We out.